hi there and welcome back to the Spirit of Watercolor with Linda. And it's been a while. I've had some uh, problems with um, allergic reaction in my skin and it's getting better. So I'm trying to get back in, into our wonderful watercolor channel here, the Spirit of Watercolor. And um, take, continue our journey together. I hope you've still been painting. I have. And um, today I just wanted to kind of uh, think about paper. I've talked about quality of art supplies in my early uh, videos, so check out about all the different supplies, brushes and uh, paints and water, uh, paper and so forth. But um, as I continue my journey, um, I've been kind of looking at, you know, watercolor paper because it makes a huge difference in how your paintings are going to come out just from the beginning. I've advised students and family members that are in watercolor now to um, stick to quality paper. And so I've been researching for the last couple days um, some of the lesser expensive brands. And my conclusion is still not to do that. And here's a paper I've been trying lately, okay? It's called Saunders Watercolor Paper. It's a British one by St. St. Cuthbert's Mill. And um, they also uh, make Bockingford paint or paper as well. And um, this is their 100% cotton archival acid-free one. And I am telling you, I love it. Um, I was just kind of doing a quick wash of a uh, flower in my garden and it's a little soft, but um, I'm gonna add more to it to add more um, color. But I just wanted to talk about this because um, I've been using Arches like everybody forever. It's a wonderful and maybe the top watercolor paper for reliability, consistency, beautiful quality. But I also sometimes like to try different papers. And, and my conclusion is to use a watercolor paper like this that is um, high quality, but if you want to do sketches, get some small sized of these. Uh, you can get uh, lesser expensive, similar watercolor papers to practice on and sketch on, maybe thumbnail, um, but ultimately um, it's best if you want a painting, even in a sketch, to look like what you're using, you know, on your actual, you know, on your actual painting that you're going to finish and frame, you're going to want to use um, the uh, probably the same paper. And that's what I'm going to do. I was searching for days to say, what what can I get that's you know similar enough? It doesn't really work, OK? Um, at least not if you know you want professional quality paint, paper paintings. And that's what I'm uh, opting for because you know, I do put my work out and put it up and frame, you know, frame it and you know, and sell it as well. So, so let's um, think about this and let's um, and consider that even your sketch paper will be the same brand or you know, same paper, just smaller. Um, I've used little Strathmore pads and they're nice too. Um, but again, you know paper doesn't respond the way I'm going to expect it to and then if I shift over to a nicer paper it's not going to um, perform the same and there may be subtle differences but when you want to be consistent with is this what I want my painting to look like using the same paper you can even take a, maybe a sheet of this right and cut it into small pieces if you don't want to buy smaller pads of it okay that's another way so I am, you know, really uh, excited about this Saunders paper. I understand that it responds a little differently than Arches, but it does beautiful washes. The colors look wonderful on it. And the, um, you know, reliability of the quality is here. And so this is my new uh, favorite right now. So I just wanted to make a somewhat short video. And, and tell you about this. And uh, I'll show you a little bit on how it responds to paint. And then you can decide, you know, between this and like arches or other papers that you may have tried. Thank you so much for watching. I'm glad to be back. Um, and let's get um, some nice paintings going on this, this paper.
Okay, I'll see you at the table. So here's what I started on the Saunders paper here, see? Um, the watercolor flows nicely. Again, I'm, I'm, I got pretty dark there on the first application, but you can glaze in more. Um, but it's just, there's a really nice tooth on this paper. And it's a natural tooth, it's a mold made. That's another important thing with watercolor paper I've been learning is how it's created, you know. Um, with 100% uh, cotton. And then uh, I just wanted to show you, here was a sort of sketch I did of this. And this paper is different. It's, it's a nice quality as well, but it just, it handles paint differently. Stonehenge, I'm sorry, it's Stonehenge. And it's very nice. Um, and I was sketching, so sometimes you're playing around trying to figure things out. I felt like I got a little too much paint, you know, too many brush strokes. You want to apply a lot of paint, you know, and you get on your palette and really get in there. And you want to put a lot of paint on. Okay, and then I just wanted to show you, here's another one. Actually, you can see that the stone tin paper does respond well, oops, upside down, um, when you want the watercolor to flow. Just get the strong color on there initially, right? You know, take your brush and just bring it in nice and strong and then let it flow, right? Um, and again, sometimes these nice big brushes, like we've talked about before, you can get the most information on that you need uh, right away. It's going to be fresher and more vibrant. So, yeah, so here's another paper I really do like. Um, but the Saunders, it's, it's even nicer. So um, let's just uh, get in with my large and favorite uh, brush here. It's a, uh, what do they call this? Um, pointed round and um, I'm just gonna kind of go back in here so you can kind of see what this paper can do straight okay first I wet with clear water just where I want the wet on wet to go in the flower and in the stem and then just watch that paint flow and you know put it on lots of paint and let it go. And I even made my leaves with wet on wet, um, you know, letting them flow and letting them kind of define themselves. You'll see as I go along and just again, even where the um, veins are and so forth and the leaves, I just do the wet on wet and just let these things go. Already here, you can see how nicely this paper responds and I feel so confident with the water flowing. It doesn't spread too fast or too far. It just it grabs the paper and it and it it moves and it just looks lovely doing its own thing. Okay, so traditional watercolor um you go lightest colors to darkest and you bring in the darker over and glaze them over, but that rule I often break, and many watercolors do, where you come in with uh, stronger concentrations of color. But I did in this one do the traditional, where there's lighter values, but then I am using the stronger values here, as you see, uh, and using that nice big pointed golden fleece brush. It's a synthetic brush, but it's very nice to help me to, uh, if I load it after I put on the paint like this, then I take that large brush and there it is uh, flow you know pull that paint with that clear water in the brush and let that paint flow and this paper does this so wonderfully and not too fast it's just the way it's sized or something it just it's like you feel like you have control as your paints flowing you know it's it's not just running out of control 
and uh, I just think it's a wonderful paper. So I hope you are getting the idea of how nice this Saunders watercolor, Saunders Waterford watercolor paper works. You can order it on Amazon or at the art supply stores. I got it from Blick Art Supplies and it was very prompt coming, uh, except for some back order, but it was 40% off. So, and uh, I will probably wrap this up and show you the final picture uh, because of the length and I'm trying to keep these videos to a sizable um, amount they don't go on and on so I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll keep coming back and keep learning and growing with me about watercolor. And, you know, learning about the materials and supplies is a very important part of watercolor for your success. It's just like a golf club, uh, playing golf, I always say. Um, you know, if you have good golf clubs and uh, they're high quality, you're gonna get a very uh, quality game. And, you know, that's how it is with many things in life. You get the best quality and you're gonna get the best outcome. So thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and come back and we'll do some more fun videos real soon. Thanks for joining me in the spirit of watercolor. Take care now.